to proceed. Today, inshallah, we will go over Kafaratul Qatl, the Babu Kafaratul Qatl, or the chapter on expiation for killing. Chapter on expiation for killing. Uh, just uh, for orientation, we are uh, in the section of penalties. And we have talked before about uh, equal retribution, qisas. And we have talked before about a diyat, which are diyat me is the plural of dia, and dia is indemnity for killing. Um, indemnity is sometimes called the blood money, and that's the, the sort of the uh, compensation for the victim's family, whether this killing is intentional or mistaken or quasi-intentional. There is compensation for the victim's uh, family. This compensation in the case of intentional killing can uh, be accepted by the family if they desire in a place of equal retribution. However, in mistaken uh, killing and quasi-intentional, the, the compensation is the only thing that's there because there is no equal retribution in these uh, cases. Uh, but it is not only equal retribution and compensation. There is another thing that is uh, also required, uh, which is al-kafara, expiation. Now, al-kafara is not uh, necessarily haq uh, al-qatil wa ahlih. So this is not necessarily the right of the victim and the family of the victim, but this is haqqullah, this is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that kafara is uh, required in which cases? In any in non-intentional killing. So it would be required in mistaken and quasi-intentional, because as we said before, quasi-intentional is treated like mistaken in every respect, except that the daya will be magnified in quasi-intentional like it is magnified in intentional. But in other respects, quasi-intentional, which is shibh al-amd, you're fighting with someone, you hit them, you kill them, it's unintended, the killing is unintended. But since it was part of uh, an assault, an intended assault attack on the victim, we don't treat it just exactly like mistaken killing because there is some aggression involved here. But at the same time, you didn't really mean to kill them. And these things could happen a lot, you know, where people are not really intended murder, but, you know, uh, like in, in the heat of uh, like a a fight, things could happen, and, and so it is, uh, it is somewhere between intentional and mistaken murder. So when it comes to the expiation uh, for, which is the kafara, kafarat al-qatl, expiation for killing, according to the majority, that expiation of killing is only required of mistaken and quasi-intentional uh, killing, like people who commit mistaken or quasi-intentional uh, killing, as if people who commit intentional murder, their crime is too big to have a kafara for it. Uh, that's, the, that's the concept to hear, because some people may ask, and actually that's not, the rationale is not particularly that far-fetched or remote, because the Shafi'is use that rationale to say that the kafara is also required of people who commit intentional murder. It's the a fortiori rationale. That's what the Shafi'is use. If it is required of people who commit mistaken murder, then a fortiori, it would be required of people who commit intentional murder. But the Jumhur said, no, it's not an a fortiori argument. It's a different type of thing completely. Intentional murder is too big of a crime to have, a, to have expiation. Um, 
and uh, you know the expiation is required of people who commit mistaken or quasi intentional murder because this is an expiation that they could do in the dunya to basically relieve them of accountability in the hereafter so they expiate in, in the dunya uh, by you know the emancipation of a free uh, slave a male or female or uh, for those who are unable to emancipate, uh, then they fast uh, two successive months, uh, two months in succession uh, or in a row. Okay, so Imam Ibn Qudama, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his book, Al-Umda, uh, says under the chapter on expiation for killing, Babu Kafarat al-Qatl, ومن قتل مؤمنا أو ذميا بغير حق أو شارك فيه وفي إسقاط جنين فعليه كفارة وهي تحرير رقبة المؤمنة فمن لم يجد فصيام شهرين متتابعين توبة من الله سواء كان مكلفا أو غير مكلف حرا أو عبدا سواء كان مكلفا أو غير مكلف حرا أو عبدا whoever kills a believer or a zimmi that is covenanted, contracted, non-Muslim in a Muslim land without justification or participates in a killing or in the abortion of a fetus must expiate. The expiation is by freeing a believing slave. He who does not find the means to do so must fast two consecutive months to show repentance to Allah. This is whether or not he, the killer, or she, could be, is mukallaf, and whether he or she is free or a slave. Okay, so let's break this down. So he's saying that anyone who kills a believer or a zimmi, bighayri uh, haqqin, uh, or participates, uh, uh, or aborts a fetus, then a kafara will be required of them. So the first thing is mu'min or zimmi. Uh, so, so, you know, a believer or zimmi. And the zimmi is according to the majority. The Maliki said no, but the majority said even zimmi. Any mu'ahid, any covenanted, any contracted, non-Muslim, any non-harbi, non-combative, non-Muslim, uh, the kafara will also apply in killing them because it's an act of aggression uh, that is that would require a kafara. An act of aggression or if it is mistaken killing, uh, there is some element of negligence. And that is what we need to, to understand about mistaken killing in Islam and why there is uh, all of this, diya and kafara and so on, although it was mistaken, because there is some degree of negligence involved in mistaken killing. You did not pay attention. Uh, basically, you shot the deer without looking, you know, right and left uh, to see if there is anyone within range, any human being within range. Uh, so your bullet, you know, hit a, a person. There is some degree of negligence on your part. So anyway, so whether it is aggression, as in quasi-intentional murder, or some negligence, as in mistaken murder, you did something wrong. So whether the um, victim is mu'min, a believer, or zimmi, the kafara is still uh, required. And the, 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 the proof on this is, uh, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وما كان المؤمن أن يقتل من الخطر من خطر من خطر أن فتحرير رقبة المؤمنة ودية مسلمة إلى أهلي إلا صدقوا فإن كان من قوم عدو لا فإن كان من قوم عدو لكم فتحرير رقبة المؤمنة وإن كان من قوم بينكم وبينهم ميثاق فدية مسلمة إلى أهلي وتحرير رقبة المؤمنة 
وإن كان من قوم بينكم وبينهم ميثاق فدية مسلمة إلى أهله وتحرير رقبة المؤمنة. If there is a covenant between you and those people, then uh, what is required is there that would be surrendered or given to his family and uh, emancipation of a free, uh, emancipation of a believing uh, slave. And now, this is not saying a believer. This is saying anyone between us and, and whose people uh, uh, there is a covenant or a ahd or you know a peace treaty or something. Uh, Does citizenship constitute a covenant? Citizenship constitutes ahd. Citizenship is ahd. Citizenship is a covenant. And pe people who are citizens of one country, they have all come to agree among themselves that they. Uh, that they will sign on to this agreement, uh, which is being compatriots who, uh, and, and being citizens of that particular entity or polity. Okay. Uh, it is covenanted, it is mu'ahid, you know, which could be larger, it could be wider than zimmi. Zimmi is usually used in the context of some non-Muslim living in a Muslim land with a covenant, with ahd. Uh, but this also applies to anyone that has ahd. And that is the position in the madhab. It's not my own, you know, concoction. So it is about the ahd. If there is between us and them, uh, a, cov a covenant, then, there, then that person is ma'asum uh, dam, meaning inviolable. And if they are, if they are inviolable, then this discussion will pertain to them, according to the majority, including the hambalis. Okay, so that's the first part. He said, "Aushara kafi," which means or participates in a killing. Uh, or participates in a killing. So 200 people participate in the killing of one person. Participate in the killing of one person. How many days will they pay to that one person? How many days, indemnities, will they pay to that one person? One day. Okay, 200 people participated in the killing of one of this person. How many believing slaves do they need to free? 200. Kafara is not divided between them. Kafara is the individual responsibility of each one who participates in the killing. The individual responsibility of each one who participates in uh, the killing. And he said here, uh, of course, uh, of course, according to the majority, the victim could be free or slave, it doesn't matter. According to the majority, the kafara is binding whether the victim is free or slave. Uh, and certainly whether the victim is old or young, whether the victim is male or female, you know. So the, the only, you know, the, the free or slave, according to the majority, it, it, doesn't, it, is not, it doesn't matter, the believing and the uh, basically covenanted, contracted, non-believer are also the same. So it is basically killing anyone who is inviolable. Um, then, uh, of course, in, in, inviolable means someone that is not attacking you. Because if you basically try to defend yourself, and in the course of defending yourself, you kill the sa'il or the attacker, then there is no kafara. There is no dia, there is no kafara, because you were entitled to this action. You were entitled to defending uh, yourself. But certainly, you do not transgress in the course of self defense. So, kafara is an individual obligation uh, of everyone who participates in uh, the killing. And we're talking about which killing here. Taken or was I intentional? Because intentional murder, there is no kafara. It's too big of a crime to be expiated for. And then he said, "Wafi iskati janin." 
um, in the abortion of a fetus, which Janin, the Janin الذي تصورت فيه تصور فيه خلق الآدمي, Janin الذي تصور, meaning the Janin or the fetus that shows the features of a human embryo, uh, that this is a, a truly human embryo. That is to them. To us nowadays, there could be there could be other ways to figure out if this was actually a Janine or not. Because they did not limit this to a particular, you know, because this is how they figured it out. Like, how do I know that this was not a clot of blood? If I see features of human embryo, then this was not a clot of blood. But nowadays, I can figure this out better than they did then. So this is a, one of the issues that are uh, subject to had because of the change of circumstances or circumstantial variables. Okay. Then, فَعَلَيْهِ كَفَّارَةً وَهِيَ تَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةِ الْمُؤْمِنَةِ uh, Okay, must expiate. The expiation is by freeing uh, a believing slave. Because Allah said, فَتَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةِ الْمُؤْمِنَةِ You know. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ فَصِيَامُ شَهْرَيْنِ مُتَتَابِعَيْنِ Because Allah said, فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ فَصِيَامُ شَهْرَيْنِ مُتَتَابِعَيْنِ he, Those who are um, the, don't have the means or don't find the means to do so must fast two consecutive months to show repentance uh, to Allah سَوَاءٌ كَانَ مُكَلَّفًا أَوْ غَيْرَ مُكَلَّفٍ حُرًّا أَوْ عَبْدًا Whether that killer uh, is a mukallaf or not could be a child, could be insane so if it is a child or insane, how do we ask them to expiate? It's a child, you know, not responsible, not accountable. Yes, not responsible, not accountable, but then we can take from their money, their wali, the wali is sabi wal majnoon, will take from their money, which is the custodian of the child or the, you know, insane, will take from their money and expiate on their behalf. Uh, whether it is hur or abd, free or a slave, the killer. So how does the killer, how does the slave free a slave? No, he will move to fasting two months uh, in this case. You know, he will, what will be required of them is fasting uh, two months in this uh, case. And then he said, uh, and, and keep in mind, I may have told you that there is a position in the Hanbali Madhab, it's actually the authorized position. If you killed yourself, uh, you're required to expiate. That is, it's, a, it's controversial within the Madhab, but actually it is, according to the latter generations, the authorized position. Uh, that if you kill yourself by mistake, uh, you're required to expiate, or, or expiation will be required, meaning that it will come out of your inheritance. Uh, so we will take out of your inheritance some money to free, to emancipate. Then it drops. So then, فَلَوْ تَصَادَمَ نَفْسًا فَمَاتَ فَعَلَى كُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهُمَا Okay, so we're, we're done with this part and we have talked about the kafara and we've talked about, uh, okay. Um, that's enough. فَلَوْ تَصَادَمَ نَفْسَانِ فَمَاتَ فَعَلَى كُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهُمَا كَفَّارًا وَدِيَةُ صَاحِبِهِ عَلَى عَاقِلَتِهِ وَإِنْ كَانَ فَارِسَيْنِ فَمَاتَ فَرَسَاهُمَا فَعَلَى كُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهُمَا ضَمَانُ فَرَسِ الْآخَرِ If two people collide and die, then a kafara expiation is binding on each of them. You understand? They died, but the kafara will be taken out of their money. Okay on each of them, and the indemnity for each one is binding on the other's family. Do you, do, you, do you know that in the Hanbali Mazhab, the indemnity is not binding on the killer? And I, and I talked about this last time, and I said that I don't particularly believe in this. It would be binding on the killer and the aqila. But in the Hanbali Mazhab, you know, وَقَضَى بِدِيَةِ الْمَرْأَةَ عَلَىٰ عَاقِلَتِهَا In the hadith of the two women from Huzayr, that the Prophet ﷺ uh, decreed that the diyah will be paid, will be the responsibility of the aqila. And he did not say the mar'a and the aqila, the woman and her family. He said the family. So in the Hanbali Madhab, they take this to heart and they 
say that the killer will not be responsible for the indemnity, it is only the family of the killer? Okay, so that's what they're saying here. The, you know, two people collide, they're walking, they collide, whether they are riding or not riding, they just collide, die, both. So uh, what are we going to do? We will take enough money from the inheritance of each one of them to free a slave, a living slave, okay? And their families, their families, will then be responsible for the dea to, to the, the, the family of X will be responsible for the dea to pay to Y. The family of Y will be responsible for the dea to pay to the family of X. So the family of X will pay the dea to the family of Y. The family of Y will pay the dea to the family of X. Uh, if they were, if they had equal deas, the two of them, then it's an equal exchange. Uh, and and then uh, so, so the the, the muhasila finally the uh, the the outcome of this the net result of this is freeing two slaves not a bad thing good a good thing a good outcome at the end of the day and the, the scholars actually try to justify this rationally by saying you made you uh, basically. Um, you hurt the Muslim community by killing a believer. You ought to free someone from the captivity of slavery to replenish sort of the community with another believer that will join uh, the community now as a free, a completely capable uh, person and, and relieve them from the captivity of slavery. So this is if they collide. So in Kana Farisaini Famata Farasahuma Fala Kuliwahad in Minhuma the Manu Faras al Akhar. Since they're talking about it, they also mention this. If they are, yes. Uh, but it's asking what happens today when there's no slaves. Well, as we said before, you, you didn't read the appendix on slavery up there <laughs> at the end of the book. I have a complete appendix on slavery at the end of the book. Uh, and as we said before, that, that Islam, uh, that, that the, the, the fact that there is no slavery nowadays is something that Islam welcomes and something that Islam, you know, encouraged the, the emancipation of slaves and, and uh, you know, no other religion did this as much as Islam did it. And no other uh, religion did this as much as Islam did it. This is something that we have to be clear on. And there are uh, alternatives. So if there is no, uh, if there are no slaves, there is, when it comes to the expiation, there is the alternative of fasting two months, fasting two months. But certainly, if the people died, then that will drop. You, you can't, you, you, because they are not there to fast. Uh, two months and the fasting in Niyaba la tadkhul fi this type of fasting. Did they know that the estimation that Adam did not come out to say, okay, now in lieu of slavery, we can free slaves, you know, suggestion of a monetary, you know, for, you know, we have lot of books and a lot of food, a lot of things that can be. Many scholars have been actually Many scholars have been talking about not moving from the emancipation to other expiations in the absence of slaves, uh, but paying an amount equal to uh, that value at the time. You know, you just correct for inflation, I guess. But uh, you pay an amount that is equal and directing this amount to uh, free and pay people from captivity or like, you know, charitable purposes uh, that are as close as possible to the concept of emancipation of slaves. Uh, but, but in general, charitable concepts, uh, charitable endeavors. Uh, this, I think that this is a, a, a viable edge they had, a valid edge they had that needs to be uh, further uh, discussed by the senior scholars, and if they decide to mainstream it, then we should accept that. 
you will always find the people that are resistant to anything, uh, but, but at the end of the day, once there is enough momentum, so once the scholars, the senior scholars agree on something, so let us say we have a conference uh, of scholars from Umm al-Qura and Imam Muhammad ibn Sa'ud and Al-Azhar and Al-Qarawiyin and Zaytuna and Dar al-Uloom and the various Dar al-Ulooms in Dioband uh, uh, and so on. And they decide to sort of they discuss a matter and then they pass a declaration. I think the Ummah should, should, you know, like it is enough that uh, we have basically uh, surrendered our fate to uh, novices and uh, for, for too long, I guess. And we just we need to respect uh, scholarship and we need to respect expertise and defer to the senior scholars on these matters. And if something you cannot completely wrap your head around, it may be because your head is not <laughs> big enough or malleable enough. Uh, so just uh, like suspect your head. Anyway, moving on. The sheikh then said, uh, OK, so if they, uh, if they uh, were two horsemen uh, on horses and their horses died, each one of them would be liable for the other's horse. Uh, obvious, each one of them would be liable for the other's horse. And then the sheikh moves to another scenario and he says, وَإِنْ كَانَ أَحَدُهُمَ وَاقِفًا وَالْآخَرُ سَائِرًا فَعَلَى السَّائِرِ ضَمَانُ دَابَّةِ الْوَاقِفِ وَعَلَى عَاقِلَتِهِ دِيَتُهُ If one of them was standing and the other was moving, the moving one would be liable for the amount, for the amount of the standing one and his aqila would owe the indemnity for him. So we're talking about two people colliding, both of them are moving. But what if someone is standing and someone is moving and they just hit them? And they killed their horse or totaled their car and killed the person, the rider. Uh, what would be the one who's standing still is not liable for anything, no kafara, no indemnity. The one who is moving is liable for the kafara, the expiation, and his or her family is liable for the indemnity, according to the Hanbali Mazhab. And we said that, you know, the other position is that uh, they and the family are liable for uh, the indemnity. Okay. So that's the other scenario. The sheikh then will mention another scenario. And look at the amount of detail. You know, these are traffic laws that they're describing in great detail. And we could benefit, extrapolate from, and, and particularly benefit from the principles, because it's the principles that we can apply in different uh, environments and different circumstances, not the detailed rulings, but rather the principles they're using. And then he said, إِلَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ الْوَاقِفُ مُتَعَدِّيًا بِوَقُوفِهِ كَالْقَاعِدِ فِي طَرِيقٍ ضَيِّقٍ أَوْ مِلْكِ السَّائِرِ عَلَيْهِ كَفَّارَةٍ وَضَمَانُ السَّائِرِ عَلَيْهِ كَفَّارَةٍ وَضَمَانُ السَّائِرِ وَدَابَّتِهِ وَلَا شَيْءَ عَلَى السَّائِرِ وَلَا عَلَى عَاقِلَتِهِ This is unless the standing one was committing a violation by standing such as one who sits in a narrow street or a path that belongs to the moving commuter. In this case, in this, uh, yeah, this, is, uh, this is amazing. In this case, he would be liable for the expiation, the compensation for the moving commuter and his mount, and nothing would be owed by the moving commuter or his aqila. Uh, or his aqila. So here, you know, the person who was standing was double parked, and someone moving hit them and killed the person inside the car and totaled the car. Uh, that person that is standing, he was double parked, is responsible, uh, and this person, let's assume this person died as well, 
and this car was totaled as well. This person who was standing in the wrong you know, spot will be now responsible for the moving commuter and their mount, their car or their camera. Then the sheikh said, uh, this is a completely different scenario now. It's not about traffic anymore. وَإِذَا رَمَى سَلَاسَةٌ بِالْمَنْجَنِيقِ فَقَتَلَ الْحَجَرُ مَعْصُومًا فَعَلَى كُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهُمْ كَفَّارًا وَعَلَى عَاقِلَتِهِ ثُلُثُ دِيَتِهِ وَإِنْ قُتِلَ أَحَدُهُمْ فَكَذَلِكَ إِلَّا أَنَّهُ يَسْقُطُ ثُلُثُ دِيَتِهِ فِي مُقَابَلَةِ فِعْلِهِ Okay, so if three people using a catapult and the rock, if three people uh, using a catapult and uh, the rock hits an inviolable person, or if three people launch a projectile, if three people launch a projectile using a catapult, and the rock hits an inviolable person, expiation is binding on each one of them, and one third of the indemnity is due from his aqila. If the rock kills one of them, the three, the same applies except that one third of the indemnity will be dropped since his death was partially caused by the uh, individual himself. Okay, so we have a catapult here. Okay, whatever, catapult. You know, and then the projectile thing, and we have three operators. Three operators, X, Y, and Z, operating the catapult. And the projectile rock, hates an inviolable person, inviolable person. Uh, so each one of them will have the expiation, right? Will do the expiation, free a slave or fast two months if he is unable to free a slave. It's two consecutive months. But then uh, we, we said that, is there equal retribution, Kisas? No. no, mistaken, quasi-intentional, no equal retribution. What, uh, what is left, think about it, dea and the expiation. We said expiation, each, it's an individual responsibility of each one of them. The dea will be divided one third, one third, one third, three operators. Is the dea binding on them? This is Hanbali now. No, they're not, uh, you know, even if it's not Hanbali, the, uh, you know, the, the other position is, uh, the, does not basically acquit the haqila completely. The, uh, but says that the, the, the killer is one of, you know, it will participate also. You know, his family will help him. It's not like he will walk away free. Um, no, so, okay, so, but in the Hanbali position, the one third will be on this person's family. The one third will be on this person's family. Okay. So they will expiate, and one third of the day will be paid by their family to the family of uh, the victim. Yes. yes. Sorry. Yes. I don't have military experience, so how does this work in a war? It's so chaotic. Uh, but but you gotta be careful uh, to like, if if you are completely found to be at no fault. Like, let us say that inviolable person was within the rows of the enemy, you're not at fault. If you, can, if you, if you, if that, if that inviolable person was standing with the enemy, you are not at fault. But some, huh? What about the bomb towns? People go and bomb towns and bomb cities and bomb... But, but the, the catapult also, you may, uh, you may try to hit one side and you hit another side. Or you may, like, uh, not pay attention and uh, friendly fire. But friendly fire with some negligence on your part. So... so we can prove there was, like, manufacturer's fault? <laughs> okay, huh? Bombs? Any person that is inviolable, inviolable, that is killed in the course of some negligent operation, 
or some sort of like uh, indiscriminate operation uh, will be, uh, you know, there will be uh, expiation and indemnity uh, for those inviolable people. Well, Islam wants to protect every inviolable soul. وَإِنْ كَانُوا أَكْثَرَ مِنْ ثَلَاثَ سَقَطَتْ حِصَّةِ الْقَتِيرِ وَبَاقِ الدِّيَا فِي أَمْوَالِ الْبَاقِينَ If they are more than three, then the share for which the victim... Okay, so, so, okay, so the catapult one more time, and these are three people, and they killed this person. What if they, if the three people tried to shoot that projectile, and it went back and killed one of them, one of the three? So then he says, وَإِنْ قُتِلَ أَحَدُهُمْ فَكَذَلِكْ إِلَّا أَنَّهُ يَسْقُطْ صُرُّ ثُدِيَتِهِ فِي مُقَابِلْ فَعْلِهِ Okay, so the, they tried to shoot, it, it fired back and killed one of them. Each one of them, including the, the victim, will have to expiate. We will take, because the victim was one of the three operators. So the victim will expiate, this will expiate, this will expiate. Okay? Now, the victim now, uh, uh, the family of the victim now are waiting for what? The indemnity. Okay? So the indemnity will be one third, one third, zero. Because he killed himself. So when you kill yourself, you're not going to be responsible for indemnity. You're going to be responsible for expiation if you kill yourself, according to the Hanbali Mazhab. But, the, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so one third and one third. So the family, the family of this uh, guy will, uh, will pay one third of the indemnity to the family of Z. The family of Y will pay one third of the indemnity to the family of Z. They will eventually walk away with two thirds of the indemnity because their relative participated in his killing. Okay. But then he says, وَإِنْ كَانُوا أَكْثَرَ مِنْ ثَلَاثَ سَقَطَتْ حِصَّةِ الْقَتِيرِ وَبَاقِ الدِّيَا فِي أَمْوَالِ الْبَاقِينَ If they are more than three, then the share for which the victim is responsible is dropped and the remaining indemnity is binding on the rest. The share of the persons, then the, uh, then the share of, uh, for which the victim is responsible. So let us say there are five, five operators, and they killed one of them, killed one of them. Then one-fifth of the day will be dropped because he was participating. Um, so uh, the family of this will pay one-fifth. 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 The family of the victim will walk away with four-fifths. But they will not get the whole day because the relative participated in uh, his own or her own killing. Now, we said the family will get the family will get will get from whom? From, from, the, from the family from the family of the attacker. Wrong. More than three it drops. We said one fifth of the day. The family will never be accountable for less than one third. If there is less than one third of the day of binding, it will always be the person themselves, the attacker, the killer, mistaken or quasi intentional. Remember this when we talked about the yet? The family will only be responsible. There are certain things where the aqila will not be accountable. The aqila will only be accountable if it is more than one third of the day. One third or more of the day, the aqila will, will come in here. 
less than one third of the day. Okay, you, re you, you remove the hair off of my uh, eyebrow, one, my, uh, no, that's one eyebrow is like uh, 50. You remove the hair off of one my, of my eyelids, one of my eyelids, I have four eyelids. You, you remove the hair off of one of my eyelids completely, permanently. What is the day? 25. Who pays that? You pay it. Okay. Now, you, uh, you cut off four of my fingers. What is the day? 40 camels. Okay. Who pays that? Your family. Because now it crossed one third. So one third or more, your family will come in. And that's why it makes sense, although this is not the Hanbali position, that you know, if your family comes in at one third or more, you should not walk out. Like you should still be around, like trying to help here. Yeah, I thought four fingers is twenty. Huh? Four fingers is twenty. Four fingers is Four fingers, 40. Uh, 10, 20, 30. Well, once no, we're not talking about a woman here. We're talking about a man. Well, four fingers will be 20 uh, if it is a woman, according to the Malikis and Hanbaris, not the Hanafis and Shafais. The Hanafis and Shafais, for them, it is what? Four fingers? It is actually 20 still. But not, not, because, not like the Malikis and Hanbali, 10, 20, 30, 20. No, it is 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so that is why he said, And the remaining indemnity is binding on the rest, the rest of the killers, not their families. Not their families, because it's more than three people. So if it is one-fourth of the day, it's binding on the killer, not the family. OK. So now, this, the last point that I wanted to cover here is the, the point that we started with in the beginning. This expiation for killing is binding uh, in which cases? What are the cases of? What are the different types of murder in general? One, two, three, four. One is what? OK, so if we take it, you know, so, so let's say that we have intentional murder, and we have mistaken murder. These are by agreement two different types of murder, according to all the mazahib. Two different types of intentional and mistaken. Now, the Malikis don't believe in quasi intentional. Quasi intentional for them is mistaken. The man did not, or the woman did not actually mean to kill. It's mistaken murder. Okay. Uh, the Jumhur have this quasi-intentional as a type. The Malikis add Gila, treacherous murder. Gila. Gila for the Maliki is not equal retribution. It is had. It's a fixed penalty. There is no afwa, there is no pardoning. And we told you, we allow you to set up an appointment with someone, uh, come meet me in, you know, in the cemetery or desert or some place, and, and then you go uh, and kill them. So that is, the, so we have four different types of murder, four different types of uh, murder. Uh, What's now, the difference between it Rila has like it, it, it no it, now and it involves some degree of treachery some degree of deception treachery like a sort of yeah uh, so now we have those four different types Rila you remove this 
right away because we said that the Malikis who b b came up with that category, they don't believe it is equal retribution and this different discussion, it's a had. Okay, so what is left? Intentional, mistaken, and quasi-intentional. Uh, according to the Malikis, there is no quasi-intentional. So the Malikis will say that expiation for killing applies to mistaken, which will include quasi-intentional, because it's bundled in it, okay? So that is, uh, so, so let us say that it is the Hanbalis plus the Hanafis plus the Malikis, all of them will apply this only to mistaken and quasi-intentional and not to intentional murder. According to one position in the Mazhab that is not the popular position or the authorized position and the Shafi'is, expiation for killing applies also to intentional killing based on the a for shira arg for shira argument. If it is required in mistaken killing, it's a for shira required in intentional killing. And the Jumhur said no, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, you know, Makana Mu Makata Mu Mutamidan for Jazah Jahanam Khadidan Fiha or the Bullah Alayhi wa Anahu Adalahu Adaban Azim. And whoever kills a believer intentionally, then the has uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned their their punishments, but Allah did not ever say that they will have to expiate. Uh, it is too big of a crime, the Jumhur said, uh, for there to be expiation. Uh, so no expiation because the crime is too big for expiation. Uh, and that's pretty much it when it comes to Bab Kafarat al-Qatl or the chapter on expiation for uh, killing. We'll take just like five minutes and come back to 